Hey folks, this is The Constant Show where we talk about movies, and I am constant, and affably insomniac thunderstorm. And this week, we will be discussing A Bug's Life. So I rewatched it recently, and it's kind of weird. For starters, the bugs are incredibly smart. Like, it's a very low bar I set for bug intelligence, and these things clear it by a mile. From performing complicated circus illusions, to Hopper understanding the politics of the bug world enough that he can leverage an almost dictatorship onto the ants, to having entire token economies that they run out of little bug businesses and little bug cities. The smartest of them all, though, is our protagonist, Flick, who develops the following inventions. A telescope, a megaphone, a parachute, a cap, a backpack, canteens. He builds a plane at one point. Oh, and let us not forget his first invention, which is a perpetual motion power chainsaw. He builds an engine without electricity or combustion, and he's an ant. This thing would break like physics understandings, even in the modern world. If they came out with a perpetual motion device that could power other things, it, it would be completely world changing in our world, not the less in the little ant world. By Bugs Life 4, Flick is going to be driving a chestnut-powered, like, mecha, just running on a rampage for, through Bugville. It, it, a little acorn Hulk buster. I'm going to let this joke go. On the opposite end of the brain scale, though, we have insects like Thumper, who is a feral grasshopper that they keep on a leash, because otherwise, like, a rabid dog. He's not the only insect that we see on a leash, though. The PT flea guy has two millipedes that pull his his uh, carnival thing, Car cartival, his millipede drawn carriage. But the weirdness doesn't stop with your smarter than the average bug bugs. There's other little facets to the world that are just a little bit strange. The first one I want to call attention to is the ant behavior is a little bit off. In one of the scenes, Hopper has the future queen in his hand. He's just like shaking her, and he's like, Which one of you ants is gonna step up and do something about it? And none of them actually do. Which in real life, I did my research for this one. Ant queens can release a pheromone that makes all the ants in the entire colony just go crazy. And sometimes they go so crazy that they murder the queens. But the idea that none of them would even step up to fight for the queen is incredibly divergent from regular ant behavior. Keep that in mind for later. Ants are often compared to a little neural network, where each of the ants acts like a little nerve. It's not so much a hive mind as it is that ants kind of communicate through pheromones. So if an ant feels like it's not going anywhere, it won't release the scent, which won't contribute the information to the rest of the ants that this way is a dead end. That's how they work in an almost collectivist kind of way. So much so that the colony can actually develop a memory that none of the individual ants have. So ants have this thing where if two ants go out, they're expected to return at the same time. And whenever they get back, the queen lets out a signal that's basically like, hey, go get more of whatever that was. I need more stuff. It should, it should basically send Sam on the, the drugstore run. But they found if they block off one of them, at first it creates a little bit of chaos with the ants because now they're no longer on the same schedule. One of them's getting back sooner than the other one, and now he has to wait for the other one to go out. But eventually, the colony will just develop an almost rotation to compensate for it and lose no efficiency. In this way, the colony can develop a memory that none of the individual ants have. Why then do none of these ants fight for their queen? It seems like a natural part of their nature. You can see in the beginning of the movie that they actually do adhere to certain parts of their nature because they're still in the colony, they still have an ant now. At one point, uh, one of the ants runs into a leaf and he gets all confused and they have to sort him out so that he can continue doing his ant thing. Also keep that in mind for later. A few more weird things that happen throughout the course of the movie. The Prey Mantis is married to a moth. They have an entire matrimony system, I guess, for bugs. Whenever Flick is walking away from the princess, he tells her to see you in the DMs and BYOB, but he's an insect, so how should he know either of these terms? I'm expected to believe that this ant knows about direct messages an entire computer, an actual computer system. Keep that in mind for later. Build the case. It's it's gonna get somewhere. You just gotta stick with me. There's a bar where the mosquitoes can order blood, but where is this blood coming from? How is it being transferred into containers? 
during one of the celebration scenes, and Ant says that he hasn't felt this good since he was 70. And I think it's just the, the personification of human in them that led them to extending the lifespan of Ant's human thing for him to be 70. But in real life, the longest lived ants are only 28 years old, which means that this ant is at least 50 years beyond the record holder for longest living ant. Do you know what's even more weird? We see a lot of evidence of humans, but we're missing key specifics of them. So for instance, all the insect cities are built from all these like human like trash and stuff, right? Uh, there's a cabin, but in the cabin, we never see a vehicle or any sign of life. There's no people in there. There's no light. Despite the fact that they're able to gather all of this human stuff, all of the stuff that the bugs eat in the movie is insect produced. So the grasshoppers in both scenes that we see them in, they only eat seed at the mosquito bar that blood could be anything. We don't know for sure that it's human. The bugs do mention that there was exterminators, but how a bug would conceptualize this in the same language that we would is kind of weird to me. It's a, a strange occurrence. And despite them talking about exterminators, we never actually see one. There is a grasshopper who's missing his wings, but due to the fact that they elongated the lifespan of the ant to, I'm guessing, 100 years, we have to also assume that grasshoppers live much longer in this universe as well. So we have no actual timeline point for when his wings got removed by this kid. I laid out all my evidence on the table and there could be only one explanation for all of this. I guess technically there are a lot of explanations for all of this, but I'm gonna give you guys the coolest one. So there was a nuclear explosion of some kind and somehow during this nuclear explosion, human intelligence got infused into insects and their contemporaries via the circle of life. And it's not just that they became smarter, it had to be human intelligence due to the fact that a lot of their language, concepts, and ideas are directly human related. Even if insects were to magically tomorrow develop intelligence, it's likely that they would have their own languages that come natural to them due to the difference in physiology. This would also explain why Flick is referencing DMs and BYOB because at one point there was a human and somehow it got incorporated into the insects and all of this weirdness. We got a fly situation on our hands. We can tell that, that whatever happened to them is some kind of specific genetic occurrence because the only insects that we see who is a prominent character also suffers from another genetic abnormality in the form of albinoism. It's potentially something in his DNA that prevents him and also the bird that we see that is a super regular ass bird. It, I've never seen a more regular bird than this one. So certain things can get the intelligence boost, certain things cannot. I don't make the rules, I'm just calling them as I see them, okay? But there's even more to this theory. We see the ants and other insects do a lot of intelligent things. They have entire token economies, they have inventions and stuff. And do you know who's the smartest of all of them? It's Flick. And I'd like you to keep in mind earlier how we talked about ants as an almost kind of neural network where each one is acting as the nerve, sort of a, a brain in and of itself, in the same way that like a supercomputer is made of a bunch of other supercomputers. Well, that would be essentially what happened if each of these individual ants suddenly developed human intelligence, all commuting, getting data back and forth seamlessly. And, and faster than even language because it's just pheromones. And the smartest of all of them is Flick. And it's weird that Flick would have multiple inventions, multiple great ideas, while other ants are struggling to even get around a beat. And the only explanation for that part is that Flick is using all, all the brain cells in this neural network so that he can do impractical and cool solutions to problems. And there's even evidence of this specific facet of it if you look back at the movie. Try to name a single time where Flick is away from the ant colony where he has a good idea. When he's away from the ant colony, he almost gets killed by a bird. He doesn't recognize that his warriors are just circus performers. But as soon as he gets back to the ant colony and he's back online with his little ant network, now he wants to build a plane. He has all these cool ideas. Only explanation. Flick siphoning intelligence from the rest of the ants so that he can do practically cool solutions. He really is Iron Man. That's been the movie. Those were my thoughts. 
put your pheromones in the comment section down below in the form of words. And I will be communicating with them. Like, comment, subscribe.